Okay, so welcome back to this next video in which we are discussing pain and analgesic drugs. Okay, right. So in this video, what we're now going to turn our attention onto is neuropathic pain. Everything that we've been looking at so far is nociceptive pain. Okay, it's triggered by the activation of the peripheral nociceptors at the end of the primary nociceptive afferent. So all of what we've been looking at is nociceptive pain. We're now going to turn our attention onto looking at neuropathic pain, which instead of it being caused by activation of peripheral nociceptors is caused by problems with the neurons themselves. So the neurons in this pathway uh, whereby you carry the information from the nociceptors to the brain, those are going to get injured and they're going to start firing spontaneously and that's going to cause pain sensation even without the activation of the nociceptors and that's referred to as neuropathic pain. Okay, so let's now begin our study of neuropathic pain. Okay, right. Uh, so the first thing I want to talk about is um, what actually can cause this damage to the neurons that is capable of resulting in those neurons starting to fire spontaneously and causing neuropathic pain. Well, firstly, you can get damage to any of the neurons in this pathway that we've been looking at. So you can get damage to those primary nociceptive afferents which carry the information from the nociceptors into the spinal cord. You can get damage to the secondary neurons which are the spinothalamic projection neurons which carry the information from the dorsal horn of the spinal cord up to the thalamus. Okay, And you can also get damage to those tertiary neurons which carry the information from the thalamus to the areas of cerebral cortex. Okay, all of those can lead to neuropathic pain. Okay, so we'll start by looking at what sort of things can cause damage to the primary nociceptive afferents, and then we'll talk about what sort of things can cause damage to those neurons in the pain pathway that are uh, in the central nervous system. Okay, so we'll start with the peripheral nervous system then. What sort of things can cause peripheral nervous system damage? Okay, well the key obvious example is just uh, some sort of injury basically, a mechanical injury to a nerve, okay, and potentially this could be because uh, a certain portion of the body has been amputated because of trauma to that portion of the body, okay, so a leading example of damage to the PNS is just mechanical injury to a nerve, including, for example, uh, amputation of uh, a limb or maybe just something smaller like uh, the distal phalanx potentially. Okay, so traumatic amputation will have underneath uh, the mechanical injury. Okay, right, so that's an example of what can cause uh, peripheral nervous system damage, and that's one of the leading examples, just mechanical injury to a neuron, uh, or rather to a nerve, a whole bundle of neurons, um, which then leads to neuropathic pain. Okay, right. Other examples, however, of things that can cause damage uh, to peripheral nervous system primary nociceptive afferents, which can lead to neuropathic pain, are also diabetic neuropathy. Okay, so I'm not going to say much on diabetic neuropathy. The mechanisms of diabetic neuropathy are still debated over, with loads of different theories having been proposed. But the basic phenomenon is this, that in diabetes, poorly controlled diabetes, blood glucose is too high, okay, and it's dangerously too high. And this elevated blood glucose results in damage to peripheral nervous system neurons for reasons that, as I say, are debated. Okay, so it can also damage uh, PNS neurons, okay, including these primary nociceptive afferents. And if those get damaged, it can result in neuropathic pain. Okay, so damage PNS neurons. Okay, right. Uh, so that's another mechanism of peripheral nervous system damage. And one final thing that I want to mention is shingles can also cause peripheral nervous system damage, leading 
to uh, neuropathic pain. So let me just explain uh, briefly uh, what occurs in shingles. So shingles is basically the recurrence of the virus that causes chickenpox when you are very long, young. Okay, so initially what happens is you get infected with a virus that has a fantastic name. It is known as the varicella zoster virus. Okay, and for short, the varicella zoster virus is usually abbreviated down to the VZV. Okay, so usually you get infected with this when you're young, okay, and it causes a skin infection which is normally called chicken pox. Okay, now your body beats this infection off, okay? If you've got a healthy immune system, you will beat chicken pox, okay? And you'll beat the virus off. However, the virus is not gone. The virus gets the better of you, okay? You have not eradicated it from your body. The virus is still in your body, okay? So once you've had chicken pox, you still have the virus within your body, okay? And it sits latent in certain uh, cells of the body. And the key example of cells where it sits is the dorsal root ganglion cell bodies. Okay, DRG is short for dorsal root ganglion cell bodies. Okay, so to draw a little picture here then, uh, if we draw the dorsal root ganglion here, uh, and of course you have loads of dorsal root ganglia all at the different spinal levels, okay? And what you have, remember, in this dorsal root ganglia um, is the cell bodies of the sensory neurons. Okay, and this isn't just primary nociceptive afferents. This is all sensory neurons have their cell bodies in this dorsal root ganglion. Okay, and they then have a single process coming off that splits into two, which is one going into the spinal cord, the central process, and the other going peripherally, which is the peripheral process. Okay, so this is the structure not just of these nociceptive neurons, but also of all the other innocuous stimuli uh, sensory neurons. Okay, so basically, varicella zoster virus, it sits in the cytoplasm of these cell bodies of these dorsal root ganglion cells, okay, and it does nothing for years and years and years and years. So it sits latent in these cells, okay, so it's present within them, but it's not causing any problems, it's not dividing, it's just sitting there, basically, okay, and this is known as the latent period. Now, uh, for reasons that aren't particularly well understood, what can then happen is suddenly it can decide that it doesn't want to sit there anymore, and it can start uh, becoming unmatent, okay? And then suddenly what happens is it starts um, moving down the axons of these dorsal root ganglion neurons, okay? Specifically the peripheral process, so it goes down the peripheral process of these neurons. And then it goes right down, usually into the skin. So this peripheral process maybe can end with some receptor in the skin. And we'll say this is a nociceptor since that's what we've been studying. Okay, so here is the skin and it ends with a nociceptor in the skin. And then what happens is the virus leaves the neuron and then reinfects the skin. And this second infection that can occur years later, which again is a skin infection, is then called shingles. Okay, so. In the process of the reactivation of the virus then, okay, this can damage the neurons, basically. It can damage these sensory neurons which have their cell bodies uh, in the dorsal root ganglion, okay? And this too can damage nociceptors because nociceptors are going to be one of these uh, sensory neurons uh, which have their cell bodies in the dorsal root ganglion. So when the varicella zoster virus reactivates in shingles, um, and that can damage uh, primary nociceptive afferents, and again, that can lead to neuropathic pain. So that's how shingles can lead to uh, neuropathic pain. Okay, right. So now let's turn our attention on to how you can get damage to neurons within the pain pathway that are within the central nervous system. So again, the main cause of neuropathic pain, uh, which is stemming from damage to neurons in the central nervous system, is again just mechanical injury. Okay, so usually injury to the spinal cord. So spinal cord injury, which will damage those second-order neurons in the spinothalamic tracts, okay? Uh, but other things that could cause central nervous system damage to neurons are, for instance, strokes, 
Okay, so for instance, if you've got a stroke in the portion of the thalamus where the cell bodies of those tertiary neurons are, that could then lead to neuropathic pain because of damage to those neurons. Okay, and in a stroke, remember, it's an infarction within the brain where portions of the brain temporarily get far too little blood flowing to them, and this causes damage, if not death, of those cells. Okay, right, uh, so stroke. Or also, another cause of neuropathic pain that's stemming from damage to neurons in the central nervous system is multiple sclerosis. Okay, so what occurs in multiple sclerosis? Multiple sclerosis is an autoimmune disease, okay, or at least it's highly believed that it's an autoimmune disease, in which the immune system attacks certain cells of the body. And in multiple sclerosis, the cells that get attacked are cells known as oligodendrocytes. Okay, now what do these cells do? Well, in the peripheral nervous system, the cells which make the myelin, which myelinates uh, neurons, are very famous. They're called Schwann cells. Okay, less famous are the cells which do the equivalent thing in the nervous system, and those cells are known as oligodendrocytes. So oligodendrocytes are the myelinating uh, cells of the central nervous system. They produce the myelin that surrounds uh, axons of neurons in the central nervous system. They are the equivalent of the Schwann cells, but instead of in the peripheral nervous system, they're in the central nervous system. So in multiple sclerosis, the immune system attacks the oligodendrocytes. Okay, so an autoimmune attack against the oligodendrocytes, and hence you get demyelination of a huge number of neurons in the central nervous system. Okay, and this leads to the disease that is multiple sclerosis. And that's why it only affects neurons in the central nervous system and not the peripheral nervous system, because the peripheral nervous system, the cells responsible for myelination there are different cells to the ones in the central nervous system. And it doesn't involve an autoimmune attack on the Schwann cells, it's just the oligodendrocytes that get targeted. Okay, right, so again, that can cause huge damage to the neurons, having the myelin uh, lost. Okay, so, um, the and of course also the inflammatory process that's going to be occurring around the neurons is going to be leading to damage. Okay, so that's another thing that can cause damage to these neurons involved in this pain ascending pathway, and thereby uh, lead to neuropathic pain. Okay, right. So that's the um, things that can cause neuropathic pain now outlined. What we now want to look at is what actually happens in neuropathic pain, specifically what actually changes to these damaged neurons um, that causes uh, them to spontaneously fire, what changes in these neurons that causes them to uh, spontaneously fire. 